What's up Brozones, welcome to a simple theory video concerning Tales from the Pizza Plex's first ever story, Frailty. And this story was, in my opinion, the right one to begin with. Right from the beginning, it has you wondering what on earth is going on, and it gets worse and worse throughout the story until the ending, which has us all wondering what exactly happened and how it had happened. And let me tell you, if you read this story and didn't completely understand what was going on, I believe I have a completely viable explanation that also helps to tie Tales from the Pizzaplex to the Fazbear Fright series. So before we get into this video, make sure to subscribe, it really helps out. And of course, there are spoilers for Frailty here, so be warned. I have an audiobook and a video summary of the story on my channel for all of your frail needs. Speaking of which, let's quickly revise the general gist of this story. We follow Jessica, who is a janitor in the children's ward of a hospital. Her co-worker, nurse Macy, becomes more and more suspicious of her after constantly finding pieces of scrap metal on the floor around her and after finding some silver flakes on some of the patients in the hospital. It turns out that Jessica has a heart-shaped silver pendant and she uses a knife to scrape the flakes on the patients to help them feel better. In turn, this makes Jessica weaker and more frail, leading all the way to the end of the story where she turns into a pile of scrap metal. Now yes, you could already say that's a too be beautiful connection, but I think there's a lot more to it than just that, which we'll get onto a little bit later. Let's begin with Jessica's origins. The key thing about Jessica is that she feels her only purpose is to help people in the hospital. This is because of something in the past, a mistake that changed her. Before this event, she did have a life, but nowadays she only goes to school so that it wouldn't be suspicious and she tries not to make friends or get too close to anyone. Something that's also emphasised at the very beginning is that the phrase to and fro was very prevalent in the past. I actually don't have an explanation for this one, but I'm hoping maybe it will get touched on in the epilogues. So the main questions are, what was the wrong choice that she made in the past, what actually happened back then and why did it change her? Let's talk about the thing that almost definitely changed her at the end of the story. This is a heart-shaped silver pendant, just like the one we saw in To Be Beautiful and the Stitch Wraith Stingers. It turns out that the original pendant was created by a scientist named Dr. Talbot, with the hope to help his sick daughter, Ronelle, to get better. It contains remnant, which we actually see heal people in the Stitch Race Stingers, very similarly to how the pendant in Frailty heals the sick patients. The question is, is this the same pendant? I would say it doesn't necessarily have to be. Recall that after the Stitch Race Stingers, Larson held onto the pendant, so I question how Jessica would have gotten a hold of it. A big part of this that I haven't mentioned yet is that in the mega continuity of Five Nights at Freddy's, Tales from the Pizzaplex seems to be a saga that takes place between the Fazbear Frights and Security Breach, and seeing that Jessica is 14 years old, it could even be possible that Jessica was an- Hold on a second, we'll get to that shortly. So something that is odd about the story is how Jessica holds the heart-shaped pendant, a pendant that heals people, yet by using it, it drains her power. Why would it drain her own life force if the power is coming from the remnant inside the necklace in the first place? Well, clearly she is actually using the pendant for herself. When the pendant was a full heart, Jessica was completely fine. When it got to the point where it was a crescent moon shape, she began to look more and more frail and began to drop more and more scrap metal. When the pendant was completely used up, she just turned into a pile of scrap metal herself. In this sense, I have reason to believe that all Jessica is, is actually just a pile of scrap metal, like what Sarah becomes in To Be Beautiful. By holding the pendant, Jessica comes to life. Remember that by the end of To Be Beautiful, Sarah was still a walking, talking person. The minute the pendant came off, the illusion was unmasked, and she realised that this whole time she was just being replaced by scrap metal. The same thing is happening to Jessica. She's just a pile of scraps, like the robot uh, that she and Robert make. She's an undead human revived by metal and remnant, just like how the bullies called her zombie girl at school. So I want to bring all of this together and show you how this story has major connections to To Be Beautiful. Not only is there a heart-shaped pendant, and not only does Jessica become what she really is, a pile of scraps, I could take this one step further and say that Jessica is in fact a past Eleanor victim. Here's how that could make sense. Firstly, the time step. The events of the Stitch Race Stingers take place years after Pizzeria Simulator. Let's just round it up to 2030. People believe the events of Security Breach 
happen in 2035. So the Mega Pizzaplex was probably open sometime shortly after the Stitch Raid Stingers. Let's say what happened to Sarah is pretty much what happened to Jessica. She made a wrong decision, a mistake, and fell for Eleanor's trap. Somehow it turns out that she was actually revived by a pendant, which put her back together. It's possible that from there, her aim was to save those with soul, like the line in the sister location wall code, and so Jessica used the pendant, which she felt like she didn't deserve due to her past mistake, to help people in the children's ward. She finds out that no matter what, she can never truly be a real person, so she decides that by using the pendant to benefit others, it was the best way, that the best thing that she could do for the world. So when I put it that way, this is actually quite a sentimental story, the story of a girl who wasn't put to rest and came back to life only to realize it would never be the same. The story of someone who didn't fit in, so decided to be the angel like the boy said she was. The story of a girl who gave up a second chance so that she could change the world in the shadows. This explanation for the story makes me feel so satisfied and just makes it even better. There are, of course, still questions to be theorized about. For example, does that mean that the strange metal monster trying to retrieve the pendant in the void was Eleanor returning to the series? Remember, Eleanor isn't actually dead, she's just trapped in a bad memory. There's probably going to be some reason for the events of Tales from the Pizzaplex, so will it be Eleanor again? Additionally, Father Jeremiah seems to sound very suspicious throughout the story. At the end, he's the only one that knows what happened. He's also asked about a prankster, which is a clear reference to Jeremiah from the Fazbear Fright story, Prankster. Is there anything else going on within this story? That's something for you guys to discuss in my comments and in my Discord server. Let me know what you think, make sure to subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.